I think it's fair to say, ladies and gents, that was an awesome Singapore Grand Prix qualifying session. If you haven't seen it, first of all, spoilers, what are you doing here? But also, if you haven't seen it, please go and watch it. I absolutely love this one. Coming into the weekend, I think it's fair to say that most of us expected Mercedes to be the team to beat with Red Bull a close second, maybe a Hamilton, Verstappen, Bottas, Albon fight for pole position. Ferrari, well, they bought a front wing update. Also, Singapore, three DRS zones this year for the Singapore Grand Prix instead of two. And Ferrari somehow made it work. Ferrari somehow, very quickly over the session, became the team to beat. And whilst they weren't quite able to lock out the front row, thanks to a mistake from Sebastian Vettel on the final lap, it was Charles Leclerc, quickest of all, continuing his streak now of three pole positions on the bounce, every single pole position since the summer break. It also means that Charles Leclerc, now on five career pole positions, has the most pole positions in 2019, of any driver, Hamilton has four, Bottas has four, and Verstappen and Vettel have one. So, Mercedes have eight pole positions, Ferrari have six, and you know what? This second half of the season, Ferrari, they're looking good. Anyway, let's go through the times, then we'll, we'll go into the, the finer nitty-gritty details of qualifying. Hamilton, P2, was lucky to recover in his final lap, ending up just in front of Sebastian Vettel in P3. Max Verstappen P4 with Alex Albon in P6. First time in a long time. Both Red Bulls have been in the top six together. Valtteri Bottas was P5, splitting the two Red Bulls. I think he'll be a little bit disappointed with that Valtteri. Definitely had a car capable of pole position today. Best of the rest was Carlos Sainz. It didn't actually look like it was going to go Sainz's way for a lot of the session, but Lando Norris wasn't able to hook it up in Q3. We'll definitely talk about him because he was looking on for a real special result at his first ever attempt in Singapore. It was the two Renaults in P8 and 9. Again, Renault really having a good turn of pace in this second half of 2019. But again, it was Ricardo getting the best of Hulkenberg, who Hulkenberg looked to be, over the weekend, the Renault driver who had the edge in Singapore, but not to be in the end of qualifying. And Lando Norris, as I just mentioned, was the final man in the top 10. Struggled at the very end in Q3. However, in Q2, was looking very strong. Moving on to the second half of the grid, it was Sergio Perez, who ends up P11. However, has a five-place grid penalty, so should start the race P16 tomorrow. Giovinazzi will start the race P11, a really strong place to start in Singapore. We'll talk about why in a moment. Pierre Gasly, P13. He felt he had enough pace for the top 10, but wasn't quite to be really close, though, between the lower end of the top 10 and all the way down to Kimi Raikkonen in P14. Kevin Magnussen, a real shock actually, getting through into Q2, a stonking lap from the Dane. He ends up P15 overall. Danny Kvyat, a shock out in Q1, but perhaps not so much of a shock. Lance Stroll, the two Williams also out in Q1, with Roman Grosjean P18. The F1 word bullying me just a little bit, saying that Grosjean is celebrating. The fact he's got a new contract with a P18. Of course, if you saw me over there on the channel, you might already know some of my thoughts. That was, I did the race, or the, the live, what does he call it now? The quali watch along, I believe is what Sean calls it. I was over there with him. So if you want to see my full reaction of the entire session, you can go and do that on his channel right now. Right, let's do this. Let's do this in normal order. Today we'll start with our pole man, Charles Leclerc, and we'll finish with the other pole, Robert Kubica. Good meme, Dan. Uh, starting with Charles Leclerc then. A really good lap in the end from Leclerc. I think Ferrari were the team to beat, so it's not a mega surprise that one of them had managed to get pole position here, but we know how quick Mercedes are. We know how good Lewis Hamilton is. In Singapore, just cast your minds back 12 months. Many people say in that the best qualifying lap of all time was Lewis Hamilton last year in Singapore. Hamilton just missing out. However, 
What I do have to say is after the first runs in Q3, both Mercedes over a second away from the current pole position time at the time, which was Sebastian Vettel. And Vettel himself, who ended up P3 overall, his initial time was enough to get P3. However, Hamilton, what a lap he must have had at the end to be able to jump Vettel over a second worth of time he found in that final run. A really good job from Lewis. So for Leclerc to be able to snatch pole on a track that nobody expected Ferrari to even be on the front row, yet alone to snatch pole position, really good job from Charles today. And for two races in a row, it's a front row with Leclerc and Hamilton. And after the unfinished business, shall we say, of Monza, I think Hamilton's looking forward to this one. However... What's different this time is Sebastian Vettel is in third, with Bottas down in fifth. That means Ferrari potentially could have a little bit more wiggle room with strategy, as long as Vettel doesn't crash in the opening few laps like he did in Monza. But I think Sebastian looks ready this weekend, looks hungry for a good race. So watch out for him on the opening lap. Cast your minds back to 2017. Hopefully he doesn't do that into turn one. But I think Vettel... Being able to be that rear gunner to Leclerc or even getting in front of Hamilton will be a big story early on in the race. Max Verstappen P4 then. How do we feel about that? I think Max will be a little bit disappointed. For Red Bull, getting both two cars in the top six, that's not happened enough this season. That's why Gasly was moved on and Albon brought in. This is the first chance both Albon and Verstappen have had without grid penalties so far since the summer break, since the two have been together. So it was our first session to compare Albon with Verstappen. Albon ended up six tenths off, I believe, on his teammate, which I personally don't think is dreadful, considering it's Albon's first ever time in Singapore, his third ever race for Red Bull, and it's Max Verstappen. So I think that's a pretty strong job from Albon. So from a Red Bull point of view, I think they'll be happy with both cars in the top six. But from a Verstappen point of view, I think he knows there was potentially more on the table this weekend. But maybe there wasn't. I don't think any of us were expecting that pace from Ferrari. And if we take Ferrari out of the equation, he would have been second. So we won't know. But I think more was on the table for Red Bull today. But I want to know your thoughts on that in the comments below. For sure, Valtteri Bottas will be disappointed. Just like Hamilton in his first lap in Q2 didn't go well. Second lap, gain time, but not enough, ended P5. We just spoke about Albon then. Carlos Sainz P7. A good job from Sainz once again, don't get me wrong. Proving that he very likely could end up best of the rest at the end of the season. May even snatch P6 in the championship if Albon doesn't get enough points come the end of the year. I think the biggest story with the McLarens is Norris. Norris's time that he set in Q2, would have been good enough for 7th place on the grid today. Made mistakes in that final run, ends P10. The two Renaults, to be honest with you, they were slower than the McLarens, but better than the rest of the field. So tomorrow, I think Ricardo and Hulkenberg, are they're going to have a nice inter-scrap, but also they're going to have to be smart with strategy. Last time out in Monza, they were comfortably best of the rest, where, to be honest with you, they could have done any strategy and probably still ended up fourth and fifth. This time out, it's going to be a little different. The two McLarens are going to be there playing around with them. And also Albon potentially could be in this fight. Just depends on how quickly Albon can get up to scratch with that Red Bull in race pace. P11, Sergio Perez obviously carrying that five place grid penalty into the race tomorrow. But saying that, Perez on the bubble of going out in Q1 to end up 11th, almost scraping into the top 10. I think it was a good job today from Sergio. A scruffy start to the weekend. Obviously, contact with Magnussen yesterday in practice. You shouldn't be making contact with other drivers in practice. Hit the wall today as well, this morning, in practice three. Last year, we know the pretty torrid time he had crashing with his teammate on the first lap. A dodgy move with Sergei Sorokin. Ended up nowhere near the points last year. Plenty of penalties. However... Qualifying went well, and I think they'll be optimistic with maybe a, a unique strategy. Uh, racing point could go well. Lovely shot, that is, of the two racing points there. Love that one under the headlights. P12, 
Giovinazzi, I said earlier that I wanted to talk about him a little bit because I think he's really carrying a bit of momentum at the moment. Spa drove an awesome race, except the final lap where he crashed through Puon. Monza, home Grand Prix, again, drove a really strong race. And while quite a few of the drivers were making mistakes in Monza, Giovinazzi, nothing. I think he could go well here tomorrow. I think he could be maybe mixing it up with the Renaults and the McLaren, mainly down to the fact strategy. Last year, Sainz started P11 comfortably into the points because he started it on a different strategy. And I think the same could happen tomorrow. Giovinazzi, I mean, obviously it depends what route Alfa Romeo go, but being on those new tyres on a circuit like Singapore where track position is everything, if he can keep his nose clean, in those first few laps, keep your eye out for him, I think he could do well. Behind him is Pierre Gasly, and likewise with Gervinazzi, and I suppose Raikkonen as well, down in P14. Whoever, out of that battle, comes out on top in the first few laps, expect them to really make a push, try and go later on into the race, to have fresher tyres at the end, to try and make a push to move further up the points. I think we could have a really juicy fight in that midfield tomorrow. Behind Gasly, actually, actually I'll go just, I won't skip Gasly just yet. Honourable mention Pierre Gasly for one of the drivers of the day. I've not actually put him in at the end. I think if he would have got into Q3, I would have really considered him. Only just out of Q3, a couple of thousands. I mean, all qualifying sessions have been close this year, but once again, that midfield super duper close in Q2 and getting through to Q3, but comfortably in front of Danny Kvyat, who went out in Q1. A massive surprise Kvyat out in Q1, but also Kevin Magnussen. Massive lap from him at the end of Q1. Haas all weekend have been 17th and 18th. Grosjean in 18th isn't a big surprise, but Magnussen up in P15, starts the race 14th tomorrow. Awesome job. Kvyat, again, a surprise down in P16. He's got to hope for a miracle, but he's been very good. Very, very good at comeback drives this year, Danny Kvyat, so I'll keep an eye out for him. Stroll, not really much to say, likewise with Grosjean, and I hate to say this, but as always, it was the two Williams cars in P19 and P20. Moving on to driver of the day and ones to watch for tomorrow. I've been a bit boring this week, not so much with ones to watch, but with driver of the day, because I, I always say this, I hate going with the winner for driver of the day, and I mean... The pole sitter, whatever you want to say. Charles Leclerc, though, for me, just edges it over Lewis Hamilton. I think those two were the class of the field today. But saying that, I think there's guys like Gasly, like Kevin Magnussen, that definitely extracted the most from the package they were given. So they should be given a shout. Very difficult, though, today to pick driver of the day. I, I found it almost impossible, to be honest with you. Lots of impressive laps and... Perhaps more so I'm giving it to Leclerc because he just kept out of the barriers. Although he did get a little sideways on that final lap, was able to mostly keep the lap together. But I don't know. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. And ones to watch, we always choose five. However, I don't usually pick teammates. <laughs> that doesn't usually happen. I've gone with Verstappen and Albon. Mainly because I think Verstappen's going to be really racy early on, want to try and prove and, and almost make a point in this Grand Prix. Albon likewise, but I'm more interested to see, will he be at the front fight helping Verstappen or will he be dropping back into that midfield fight? Norris, we've seen this weekend, he has the pace. Can he make it up in the race? Joe Venazzi, we spoke about with strategy and Danny Kvyat, we've also spoke about brilliant at comeback drives in 2019. And that, ladies and gents, is your lot for the Formula 1 2019 Singapore Grand Prix. Keep your eye out tomorrow for our race reaction video. I'll be trying to keep an eye out for predictions in the comments section. If any of you get it bang on, I'll include them in the video tomorrow. I'm back at uni next week, so things might be a little bit different than normal, but I'm sure we'll work things out. You guys are pretty good. You're pretty patient. You're pretty awesome. Anyway, if you're new around here and if you've made it this far, feel free to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Enjoy the Grand Prix, guys. I'll see you later.